Welcome back. In this video, you will learn about the aberrant movement test. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the normal functional movements relevant to lumbar motor control, instruct a patient in their role in the performance of the test, identify altered lumbopelvic rhythm, including Gower sign, identify meaningful judder, shake, instability catch, identify a painful arc of motion, interpret the response in the context of the examination, and recall the strengths and limitations of this test for the diagnostic process. And now, Kyle Kiesel will show you how to perform the aberrant movement test. Hi, my name is Dr. Kyle Kiesel. I'm a physical therapist and a researcher, and I've been involved in low back pain research my entire career, um, primarily looking at deep muscle function and core function. There's physical tests that we utilize, and here I wanna go through one of the sets of tests we call aberrant movement problems or aberrant movement. There are several things that you will need to look out for that occur when the patient has impaired motor control. These are reversal of the lumbopelvic rhythm, Gower sign, an instability catch, pain on flexion, and pain on return from flexion. So we'll bring in Mimi and we'll go through with her the primary things you're looking for during the aberrant movement testing, okay? First of all, we wanna see, we just instruct her, hey, let's go down, try to touch your toes, go as far as you can, and come right back up. Smooth, no hitching, very nice movement, and no pain. So that would be normal, okay? The five things we're looking for to determine whether aberrant movements are present or what's a positive aberrant movement the first one's known as the reversal of lumbopelvic rhythm. This is probably the hardest one to picture and think through. This is when they go down to touch their toes, and that looks great. At the bottom of the toe touch, when the patient starts to come back up, they realize they don't have the motor control to do that. So they lock into lordosis and hinge their hips and just come up like a deadlift, okay? So the toe touch, go ahead and go down. She can reverse that curve, but she can't go backwards. She locks into lordosis, and hinges straight up using just her glutes to bring her up. So that's number one, reversal of lumbopelvic rhythm. Number two is the most obvious one when there's just pretty gross weakness or motor control problems known as Gower sign or thigh walking. That's when we go down to do the toe touch, get down there and her brain is like, I can't get back up. So she uses her hands to walk up her thighs just like that using the leverage from her arms to get her back to that neutral position. So Gower sign or, or thigh, a positive thigh climbing sign would be, be the second one. Third is the instability catch. This is when she goes down to touch her toes, but there's one place in the movement where it's not smooth and she works around that problem. So she goes down, you see a little lateral deviation, and then you may see it on the way up as well, okay? So lateral deviation either on the way down or on the way back up. It doesn't have to be both. Often it is, you almost see it in the same place. One or the other would be another positive aberrant movement. And the last two are pretty simple, just pain with movement in an arc. So as she goes down to touch her toes, somewhere in the middle, she says, yeah, that hurts. And particularly on the way back up, she gets pain in the, in the same spot. I found that patients coming back up from the toe touch that have pain in that spot is, is, is a clear sign they have an underlying multifidus problem. So thanks, Mimi. Those are the tests that we're looking for in that category of the aberrant movement test, those five different things. If any one of those are present, that suggests there's an underlying core dysfunction very commonly related to a, a deep multifidus problem that may respond quite well to reactivate.